Bubble wrap. Oh, love. Beautiful. just to bring them all back up. So, yeah, we got like, I don't know, 60 or 70 orders prepped right now. So the goal today is to, um, the goal today is to pack what I've got prepped. Um, we'll see. Uh, two questions. Number one, can you hear me okay? And number two, can you hear the music okay? I see there's eight people in the chat, so please let me know. Gamer user Bowser. Oh look, I'm doing fan friggin' fantastic. Yes and yes. That's what I want to hear. Alright, thank you. You're the best. Um, let's just get started, eh? We got we're starting with order 29283. 29283, you're the lucky first order. It's not true actually. We uh we've actually packed quite a few orders already, but then I realized, you know what? I could, uh, I could probably, I could probably get a live stream in whilst packing orders. Help that algorithm out, you know? We're, we're gonna hit like 10,000 subscribers by the end of the end of October, I reckon. So that would be kind of dope. Thank you guys all for like being here and stuff. I appreciate it. Never saw myself as a YouTuber. But uh, hey, I'll take it, you know. It's kind of a fun life over here. Both audio are good, thank you. Medikai, appreciate ya. The audio gets wonky because of this loud freaking, loud freaking tape you got. Let me know, I can then move my camera closer. Honestly, I, I really want to know the solution to that. The tape gun is just loud. So, I'll be honest with you guys, because I'm always very transparent. This was probably the most stressful day that I've ever been in business. We, uh, we've had this many orders several times, like Raging Surf, we sold like 800 boxes, but I've never, ex like, I've never had to deal with big stuff at this, at this quantity. Um, like, English stuff's just bigger, like the UPCs, I mean, they're cute, they're this, they're this big. And like I'll be honest, for the past like four hours, I was just setting up the garage and like finding the right boxes. We had to overnight a bunch of really big boxes. I thought our boxes were perfect, and it turns out they were like an inch too small. I, I just it was my fault. I just didn't do the proper research. So I had a, I paid four hundred dollars to overnight a couple pallets of boxes um, from. U line, along with some bubble wrap. You can see some giant flipping bubble wrap rolls are bigger than me. But uh, got like I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like I'm gonna be honest. This was probably the hardest day of business ever. Like it, it wasn't fun at all. I'm always like you know joking. Oh, kill me. Business is hard. Like I'm always like half joking. Like today, genuinely. 
I didn't know what I was going to do. So, and, and that's, I mean, it's what? It's only, it's 12.30, so it's just it's barely past midnight. I'll have time to do this because I got the pallets early, which, like, major shout out to Southern Hobby because if they didn't do that, I'd be that. Like, I just wasn't prepared for this. It's, this is, a. Uh, 1,700 pounds of things going in and then out of my garage in the same two-day period, 48 hours. And I told the mail, uh, the USPS people, I was like, no, I'm going to need like two or three trucks a day. And they're like, I don't think they believe me. I'm like, nah, like, you, you got to see this stuff. So I've got a Mazda, as you guys have probably seen. The Mazda really doesn't hold that much, so I'm really hoping the, the mail trucks come through for me. I just don't know, I guess, I feel like such a fake business, like I'm one dude, just some stupid 30 year old dude, in a basement, and somehow I, I built this Pokemon empire, thanks to you wonderful people, viewers and customers alike. And I, like, genuinely still don't know what I'm doing. Like, genuinely, like, there's a lot of stores, like, game stores on YouTube, it's like, Mason with Cardinal Gaming, I watch them a lot, there's, uh, Ruby with Elf Investments, there's Rob with RNG Games, and I, I, I look at these people, and I'm like, those are real business people, like, they have stores, and they do business people things. And then there's me, who I assume I sell about as much as they do, maybe more, maybe less, I don't know. But like, I feel like I'm such a joke. At least how I operate, like this isn't official. I mean, like, ain't, ain't no way my distributor Southern Hobby knows that I'm up at midnight in my garage on a fold-out table from Costco doing this all by myself, like, the, the orders I put into Southern Hobby, they surely think I have a whole team, because, like, I should, but I'm like, nah, bro, it's, it's pretty much just me and the people that watch me on YouTube, and I'm just like, huh, I guess, I guess I'm still playing pretend over here, but, uh, I don't know, I, I gotta step it up for, for the customers here, I, uh, I was about this close to just shut my store down online. It's like closing for the day. Cause I was like, I don't know that I can handle more orders, quite frankly. Like, and, and we're getting busier now because of the holidays. So like today on our on our website we sold like 13 grand of stuff. And that all also needs to go out tomorrow. And I'm over here just going, God damn. How am I gonna package two pallets of this and then also handle the new orders? And genuinely, I don't know. I, I really don't. Um, it'll happen, it always works out. But I don't know what I'm doing. I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just pretending. I'm, I'm lying to everyone. Better kind, though, it was hard shipping out those Yeah, the EPC sucked. I have 309 I'm shipping out today, ideally. Um, Micah, would you ever hire a team in the future? Once I get out of my house, yes. I don't want people in my house. I'm, I'm too private for that. Uh, Cruel 2SD, inspiration, thank you. Thank you for the comment, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm trying to be inspiring over here. I'm trying to be inspiring about the sugar-coated BS that half the people throw down. 402 Pokey, hi neighbor. 402, representing the 402. What's up? We got a, we got a fellow Omaha in, in the house, it, it appears. What's going on? Do I know you in real life? I never know. Yes, sir. Uh, where is being keep going? I feel like, ironically, I work more productively when I have people to talk to on the internet. I think my wife was like, you're really going to do a live stream tonight? I'm like, yeah. Because I, I, quite frankly, I talk to myself anyway. 
Um, it's usually when I think of video ideas. Like, I think of video ideas by talking to myself. But I figure, you know what? If I'm gonna be out here all night, I might as well set the camera up and talk to other people. It's a little less psycho. And hey, get some sweet ad revenue out of it too. So it's a win win. Oh, bet, bet. I love meeting the Collecticon people. Good to hear from you, bro. Supercan's been a while, you beefed up. <laughs> Tail, what's up, dude? Yes. God, that's a throwback name. Damn. Super. Wow. Supercan's the OG, man. He was here, he's been here since, like, our first week in this? I don't know. Since our first stream, like, April 2021, maybe. Damn, good to hear from you, homie. Jesus. Throw back. Huh. All right, but yeah, I uh, beefed up a little bit because instead of staying up until 6 a.m. streaming every day and starving myself, I go to the gym now and eat. No hate on streaming. Extremely fun, but I had to choose eating and going to the gym over streaming. And until I hire somebody, that's that's kind of where I'm at. But uh, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I'm like. I'm like, there was something that happened, 402. Yeah, in the lobby, you helped me with a stupid, uh, admit one bracelet. On that collector con. I don't even know where, Kansas, maybe Kansas City, I don't know. But, uh, 402 Pokey was there. And he saw me struggling to put on the freaking, uh, like, the, the bracelet, you know, to, for admittance. Admittance? He helped me out, he helped me, bro. Nice. Kansas City, anyway. Oh, the only collection I went to this year. Carrying this box of the basis came off the plus savage, I hope so. I was saying earlier, um, I'm, op I'm operating out of garage today because, you know, we had two pallets of stuff, and uh, I thought it'd be kind of silly to bring all of them downstairs just to bring them all back upstairs. So, so I just kind of set up a shop. I dropped this thing. Drop this thing. Okay, well. I'll do this one. Ah, here she is. Alright. Yeah, so I set up a shop in the uh, garage to that. It took a long time to figure out what you get efficient. So I don't really think it's that efficient either, but it's, it's the best I got. Really glad I spent a thousand bucks on a freaking fancy packing station. I'm down up here in the dungeon. But uh, I think I think this is probably the smart way to do it. I had the garage open for a while. It was nice and cool outside, but I had to shut it. And now it's hotter than hell in here. So tank tops, baby. Still trying to hold back from ripping my knees. <laughs> 402 Pokey, just, just open it, man. You can get another one. There'll be more. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they printed these suckers like they printed the Charizard UPCs, TBA. Everybody wanted the Charizard UPC, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe if you, a, a month or two or three months later, my distributor calls me and he's like, hey, we got two pallets of Charizard left over. Do you want to buy them for 70 bucks a piece? I'm like, sure, sign me up, bro. They couldn't get rid of them. They couldn't get rid of those, uh, they couldn't get rid of the Charizard EPCs faster. So the Southern Hobby was, was keen in for someone to buy them all. So I'm like, shoot, 70 bucks a piece for the Charizard? Like, a month ago, these things were on stock X for 300 bucks. But yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with, with this. I'm assuming it'll be similar. Hopefully, then y'all can just buy one for uh, buy one for opening and buy the other for sitting on the shelf. I think they look sweet. Like me personally, aside from the promo card, I don't see any reason to open it necessarily. But I, I think they look good on the shelf. I'll be honest. They're pretty. Look how, look how pretty that is. It's beautiful. <laughs> Googly123, thank you for the 
Thank you for the love, I appreciate it. Been going to West Coast Fitness, 402 Pokey, uh, you know, 100 like whatever in Harrison. There's a, another customer of mine, Bryce, that, that I see uh, here and there, so. I met him one day, he's like, oh shoot, you're the Pokemon guy. I'm like, yes sir. Hello, how you doing? It's fun seeing my customers just around the city. If they, uh, if they're ever not sure that it's me, they see my freaking car with Marnie wrapped all over it, and they go, oh yeah, you're the, you're the Pokemon guy. Targon, Sony took in the source and finally pulled the Charizard and PCs from the shelf. Wow, interesting. Very interesting. I'm way on the west side, so we got a, we go to the 180th Target, but for as often as I'm at Target, because me and my wife are obsessed with the experience, I do not uh, actually go to the Pokemon aisle, ironically enough. The stuff at Target's too expensive. I, I, I see, uh, I go to High V, it's like a local grocery store chain around here. And I see the prices they want for, for packs, and I'm just like, why don't people just buy them for me? They're wanting like $5 for a sleeve pack. I'm like, bro, we, we charge like three? I don't know, people are crazy. Everybody's yelling at scalpers online. I'm like, yo, go to Hy-Vee and yell at them. Just me though. I got one of your collection boxes of the packs, I feel. One of, I got one of the new collection boxes of the packs feel different to you. The collection boxes. Um, you have to specify your. I, I touch too many things here. I, I get everything mixed up at this point. I know there's uh, the freaking. I know this isn't what you're talking about, but the freaking uh, Pokemon Classics collection box coming out. That's going to be a nightmare for people. But uh, yeah, I'm hopefully gonna get those from Southern Hobby, the $400 collection, or the yeah, $400 classic collection. Hopefully, I get close to what I asked. I asked for $300. Uh, I mean, I might get $100 if I'm lucky, but I'll give you guys a good deal if I snag them. Jeremy, what's up? Worked at Hy-Vee for a lot. <laughs> uh huh. Hy-Vee wants a lot for their Pokemons. I don't know. This is a pick of four crown Zenith, Volleyball. Nice. I used to, uh, I went to the Irvington Walmart all the time for, like, clearance. I used to do eBay full-time, which is just, like, the most internet person thing ever. Like, what, what YouTuber online didn't do eBay at some point? But back when I did it, it was actually really profitable. I don't necessarily think it is now. But back when I was doing it, like, right before Pokemon, like, 2020, 2019, 2020, you could straight go into a Walmart, I kid you not, and come out with $200 worth of stuff almost every time. It was insane. It's, it, the Irvington Walmart was a really good one. Um, yeah, the Irvington Walmart, basically the Walmart's on like the east side, like I don't know why, but like no one bought the stuff there. So the clearance department was always popping off. And I made a lot of money doing that. But uh, eventually, I don't know when it was, I, I guess ironically when COVID started, the uh, clearance at Walmart started sucking. And I, I don't know why, I don't know if it was a COVID thing, like I don't know if that affected it, or if that's just coincidence, but ever since then, the Walmart clearance department sucked. Is anyone else seeing that? Do we have any like other Walmart flippers in the house? Because at least here in Omaha, like, the clearance department at Walmart is trash. You can't make a single dollar. 180 is the stock full of Pokemon stuff, so I'm gonna buy out here. 180. See, I don't even, like, that's my Walmart on 180, but I don't even go there anymore because, uh, there's, I mean, I guess I don't really buy stuff on clearance to flip because I have my hands full with Pokemon, but I do miss it. But yeah, I stopped going to that Walmart because again, their clearance, their clearance section's ass. Sometimes I want to uh, get back into flipping stuff on eBay. Just get like, you know, 50 bucks in profit a day. It was fun. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was fun. How 
much do you need to spend with Southern Hobby for them to get your product? Uh, that's a good question. So with a, with a distributor, basically, they give you the, the the amount of stuff they give you is based on essentially how many how many brownie points you you get, which is like unofficial, but basically the more you spend with them, the more good stuff you're gonna get. Um, unfortunately, when you're new, if, if you're lucky enough to get them, they're gonna offer you a lot of crap that you're not gonna want, like crappy, crappy crap, like uh, deck boxes. EX boxes that no one likes, and you know, you don't have to take them, you're not like legally obligated to take the stuff that they offer you, but you're kind of like expected to, it's kind of like hazing almost, and basically if you go through that for long enough, they stop offering you the crappy products, and they just give you the good stuff, but like for some reference, when I was, I started selling hobby when Brilliant Stars was a new thing. And they basically do, they're called package deals. So if I wanted to get, uh, it was six cases. Uh, he said, hey, we have a package deal for every, uh, for every case of Brilliant Stars that you want, you have to buy, it was like, I don't know, a thousand dollars of crap that no one likes. And like a thousand dollars, that's a lot of money, you know. But I was like, okay, you know, if I buy a thousand dollars of, I don't know what it was, it's crap no one wanted. And I'm like, if I sell it at like a five dollar loss, people on the internet will buy it. Um, and then I'll still get profit on the brilliant start. And I did, that's kind of what I did. Even if like the stuff that I bought from Southern Hobby was worth less than it was on the market, I essentially justified it, so I was like, okay, Cyclozar boxes, yes, 402 Pokey knows. Um, I, yeah, I justified it, I'm like, okay, you know, if I buy a thousand dollars of Cyclozar boxes, and I sell them at a loss, maybe I sell a thousand dollars of boxes for nine hundred dollars, I, I take a one hundred dollar loss. Well, by, since I bought the thousand dollars of Cyclozar boxes, I got access to maybe two thousand dollars of something that's actually profitable and so like worst 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 case scenario i i break even you know usually i made some money on the stuff that was actually good and i basically just kept doing that over and over and over again where if they asked me if i wanted something i just said yes they'd offer me sometimes even the crappiest like sometimes it wouldn't even be a good offer it'd be like hey you know, we have, uh, have my most famous thing on the internet, my most famous moment online is when they offered me a pallet of Mimikyu EX boxes, a whole pallet of them. It was like, I think it was, was $10,000 of them. And he's like, hey, you know, we have this, how many do you want? I said, all of it. And again, it's not like you unlock, it's not like you get a, a reward, like you don't unlock anything officially. But I think that's when my manager was like, oh, oh yeah, Google, you, you can see them in my videos. I made a video on it. Um, I'll make another video. I'll make a video explaining all this. That, this is a good topic. But I just said all of them. And I'm sure uh, Steven, my manager, probably crapped his pants. I'll tell you what, ever since then, ever since then, my allocation for like good stuff like obsidian, I mean obsidian flames that are kind of bombing, but it, it skyrocketed. So, so yeah, I got I got all the 151 I wanted exactly. So to answer your question, um, I've spent I'm trying to think. I'm so at Paldea evolved. Paldea evolved when I started getting whatever I wanted, and when they stopped offering me like crap. And Paldea evolved. Uh, by then, by then I spent 250k with them. And so, like, I don't know that that's like the magic number necessarily, because I, I was still getting really good allocations, just at like 100k. But at the 250k mark, that's when I was like, hey, 
you know, I want 500 boxes of Paldea, and they just said, okay, here you go. Now, if I would have asked for a thousand boxes, would I have gotten them? Not necessarily. But I hit, I hit a level where I could basically ask for whatever I feasibly want. I'm not big enough to sell a thousand boxes. Like I'm not, like I'm not there yet. So I asked for 500, and I got them. Oh my goodness! I got a what did I get? Like a super chat? Thank you. Thank you, Google. I appreciate it. Fun facts, that is my first super chat I've ever gotten in my life. Thank you so much, I appreciate you. Ah, that, that feels pretty good. It's not about money, I just, it, it feels, that's, that's pretty cool going. Can I start selling Pokemon? Or I'm over here sitting on a mountain with evolving skies. Damn! Homie, oh, that's retirement right there. Southern Hobby gave me, um, I think six cases of Evolving Skies back when the reprint happened. I sold all of them for like 150 bucks a box. Oh, I hate myself. No, I'm not quite big enough, Googly. Not, not for a thousand bucks. Well, like, it depends on the set. Like, Raging Surf, we sold 800 boxes. That was good. Laws of Human Nature. Be motivated to start selling one of my new products that average about 10k a month in sales on eBay. Damn, let's freaking go. Okay. Alright, Laws of Human Nature, I see you. God, good for you. That's actually nutty. I bet your margins are a hell of a lot better than mine, too. 10k a month on sales on eBay is probably pretty damn good. Keep it up, dude. It snowballs for sure. Like, for sure, for sure. Damn, let's go. Holy crap, here I thought me making 1k a week on breaks was not bad, 250. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it for two and a half years. Like, it, it snowballs for sure, for sure. Damn. 20, 20 plus of all these guys ETBs. You can barely hear you, you need a shirt, Mike. Yeah, I wonder, um... I wonder if I should move the camera closer. Maybe that would help. Let's see. I don't know if that'll help. Let me let me know if you can hear me a little better. Shipping and shush is killing me. Shipping is one of the worst things ever. Shipping this big UPC crap. I gotta take a second mortgage out of my house to pay for all these labels. I'm telling you. So here's a crazy stat. Since January of this year, we spent I, I think 100k in shipping labels. Yeah. Well, 90. We spent 90k in shipping labels this year. Absolutely bloody crazy. I'm both happy with that and also extremely disappointed. Uh, Fabian, good morning from Germany. Good morning, or good evening from America. Thanks for being here, Germany. Mainly sell electronics that I source from thrift store. Yep, that's all we did, me and my dad. We still go to garage sales every single Saturday. Every Saturday. I don't buy anything, but he does. I looked out on UPC shipping from Iowa, it was free. Oof, that'd be nice. 100K on shipping levels, yeah. It, it'll probably be 100K by the end of all of this. Um, last I checked, it was 80, and that was a couple weeks ago. So, I, you, I could estimate about 100K, roughly. Which is just mad crazy, it's bloody wild. Sam's here is a heavy hitter's bot. Yeah, the Sam's Club, the heavy hitter's bot. That actually looks kind of ill, honestly. I'm all about it. Nims, just woke up. I love it. It's midnight here. Well, it's 1 a.m. here now. I think the heavy hitter's box looks pretty cool. I mean, so 18, that's 7 full boosters for 720, including evolving CIs, 2800 bucks. I thought it looked cool. I, it's just a unique product. I don't know. I'd buy it if I was collecting. Um, does the Rolo burn out? You know what? I gotta say, I don't like to sponsor things, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fake sponsor something, guys. The Rolo label printer. That is the most impressive item I've ever. Here, I'll show, I'll show, I'll show you one. I got one right here. I got two. This thing right here. 
This is the goat. So I have two of those. That thing has done a grand total of $200,000 of shipping labels. I don't know. Okay, um, I guess to make it more exact, we've printed 20,000 shipping labels with between those two printers. Uh, one of them probably did most of the work because the other one was kind of a secondary printer. So let's say $15,000 on one label printer over the course of two years. My God, that thing still kicks us. It, it doesn't burn out, it doesn't slow down. Um, sometimes it kind of jams, but that's just because I don't clean it enough. If you want to keep the roller clean, which takes next to no effort, I don't think it'll ever stop working. I mean, if it does, it's only like 150 bucks. It's insane, it's absolutely insanity. I got an $80 one from Amazon, four by six labels. Four by six labels, yes sir. Zebra printers are good, as far as I know. How many orders left to go out, Mason? Uh, are, are you, is this, is this maybe Cardinal Gaming Mason, or is this just a different Mason? Either way, hello Mason. I don't know YouTubers' last names. I have a lot to go out. Um, let's see, we've started with 284 orders that need to go out today. Uh, I, I should say within 24 hours, to be more exact. Um, I probably did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 284 minus 30 ish. So, yeah, a lot. The answer is a lot. That is Cardinal Mason. Say hi to Cardinal Gaming Mason. Y'all know him probably. Dude, I've, I've watched your YouTube channel for so freaking long, honestly. Like, it's so basic. Like, it's just so, I guess it's, it's similar to my channel. Maybe I got inspired, I don't know. I love it. Cardinal Gaming and RNG Games, man. Those, those two channels, I just, I can't get enough of because they're so, like, zero, like, zero production value in the best of ways. Just straight, raw information and behind the scenes. I was watching your channel, Mason, when uh, COVID was a thing, and you had, like, empty shelves everywhere, and it was, like, completely just desolate. And I was just like, damn, what's this guy gonna do? I didn't have English... Uh, in English distro at the time, I, I just did Japanese, and I was like, what is this dude gonna do? Obviously, it made sense. Like, or obviously, it worked out, I like said. But, uh, man, I was like, see, and that's, that's the kind of crap I like to watch on YouTube. This, like, the raw, like, oh, God, this is like a business owner that's straight, like, am I gonna, am I gonna survive this? No one, no one's honest enough. No, everyone's like, oh yeah. It's like, I love the behind the scenes, man. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Where is his channel? It, it's it's card and all gaming card. I guess he could. I like answering for Mason. Card and all gaming. Freaking wonderful channel. If you like my channel, you'll love his, honestly. Um, what else do we got? Do you have a preferred shipping company? I use Shippo. Um, I've used Pirate Ship before, which is fine, but the user interface, I don't really mess with. Um, the, Shippo is the best, has the best user interface I've, I've experienced so far. So I mean, let's check them out. I think it's all free. I don't, I don't think I pay any sort of subscription for it. Thank you for introducing me to CapCut. Yeah, CapCut, am I right? Dude, CapCut is the greatest freaking app I have ever used in my entire life. It's free. It's extremely powerful. Every, it, it, my videos aren't like the most fancy in the world, but like I think they look good. Like I've been kind of trying a little harder. And every video I've made, I film it on my phone. I throw it in a... I throw it in cap cut, and that's it. And, and then I edit it. I edit it. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying really hard to do all the easy orders so I can like talk and do them without having to think much. But yeah, if, if you guys have uh, you know like YouTube channels or whatever, 
Get it's cap C A C A P cuts. It's a, it's insane. There's a premium version, but like, and I, and I have it, and it kicks ass. But like, you really don't need it. And I don't get any affiliate income, so I'm not motivated enough to try to convince you. Um, this is a kick-ass app, for real. Have you saved any ducks? <laughs> Damn, that's a that is a deep cut in the Omaha lore 402. I have not saved any ducks lately. I have not. Wow, that's a deep cut. I'm still selling the monkeys out of my basement, though. My illegal monkey farm. Deep cut. Um, I got on the news for saving a duck. Like it was like like literally like a like a living duck. It was in the middle of a street by like Lakeside for you Omaha people. And uh, I think it was Lakeside. I don't know. It was in the middle of the street, and me and my dad got out of the car. We were garage selling actually. And we got out of the car and picked it up, which like like quite quite honestly was horrifying. Like, ducks are adorable, and like, feeding them bread, how, where the hell is the perforation? Feeding them bread and stuff is like wholesome, but like, if you ever try to pick up a wild duck, it's mildly horrifying, because you're just like, you know, this thing pecks me, and it has like, some horrible disease, like, I'm, I'm done, like, I'm done for. It was a very nice duck. Anyway, I wanted to see if I could get on TV, it was like, kind of a social experiment. Cause I'm, I'm weird, like this was before I was a Pokemon guy, I'm just like a goofy goober. So I'm like, yo dad, I bet we could get on TV for that. And it, literally we picked up a duck and moved it to, to a, a pond, that's literally all we did. And so I DM'd uh, like our local news station, like KETV. And I was like, yo, you want to do a story about me saving a duck? And then they literally came to my house, we drove to the pond together. And I literally just explained, and like a, I literally just explained in like a five-minute blurb how I picked the duck up and put it in a pond, and that was that was a new story. We have a lot of like murders in Omaha. Like it is no, it is by no means like a a perfect safe sanctuary, but apparently it was a real slow news day that day. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Like it was just a, it was just a, a silly anecdote. Three main things everyone should know when starting out for carrying and selling protein margin. I use Chimp Chimp to edit videos. Well, I don't really edit. Well, I don't edit that much. I mean, I kind of I slice and dice a little bit. I slice and dice a little bit. So. <laughs> Um, regarding the nothing happens here wall comment, so today I'm, I'm way like down southwest now. I moved, I moved out of the area, but there were, I guess there was uh, the cops were like training, like it was a big training exercise, but they didn't tell anybody. So literally in my neighborhood, I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere, like I'm pretty rural now. So I guess it's a good place to train. But there were two police, I never heard of this, police semi-trucks, which again, I, I never knew was a thing. And then we have this, it's like a tank, basically. It's a big armored tank, all I can, it, it's a tank. And so those were in my neighborhood, and like 12 police cruisers, and a drone that they were flying. And I was like, uh, someone got straight murdered in my neighborhood, what's happening? And all, there's all these rumors, and it turns out they were just running a training exercise. I was kind of like relieved, but equally disappointed. It would have been such an interesting story. We did have a mountain lion walking through people's backyards. That's true. Uh, every year, Omaha, like we have, we're a city of a million people. Like we're not like, we're not as like dumb, blank, nowhere as like, people say. But yeah, every year we, we get mountain lions, which is the goofiest thing. Usually just one. Like there'll be like one mountain lion just like roaming around. Like in neighborhoods, it's, it, I don't know if it's the same mountain lion that just comes to visit or what, but it's kind of an interesting, kind of an interesting little, little gimmick of living here. I guess the main question is, how much Pokemon knowledge do you need to sell product? Because I only have very basic knowledge from watching the cartoon as a kid. Where would you advise 
info. Um, Collectiverse, I mean, you can pretty much sell anything without, like, a lot of knowledge. Uh, uh, now, now I gotta try, I gotta do orders that are actually, like, left, oh, uh, no, I got some easy ones over here. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying to do the easy order so I can talk and walk. Um, t to me, it's like, you don't need to know a lot about Pokemon, really. But at the same time, if you don't know about Pokemon, you're you're probably not like you do. Like this is a job where you have to be relatively passionate to care. Um, and maybe that's naive of me to say because, like, I know you know Mason, for example. I'm assuming he likes Pokemon, but but you know him and, and Rudy and, and Rob, like they they sell you know a, a whole bunch of TCGs. They got Pokemon and Magic and blah 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 blah. So you can't be passionate about all of them. And like, I sell life shorts and One Piece and stuff, and I've never even watched One Piece. The live action kicks ass though. So like, it's a hard question. I mean, I guess the answer is no. Like, I, you know, I made a living selling stuff on eBay for a while, and I didn't know what half the stuff was. My, my biggest claim to fame, I made like $200 in one day selling men's uh, depends like like elderly men's underwear. I don't know about like I don't like study that. I just know that it was worth money and I flipped it. So like no, you really don't. But I think you could find yourself being kind of bored with it. And honestly, what built me and the, I think literally the only reason I'm sort of successful is uh. YouTube, uh, TikTok, really, TikTok, TikTok's what really got us, like, on the map, and so if you don't have much to say about your product you're selling, like, you're gonna have a hard time growing, in my opinion, at least if you're online only, because, like, Pokemon's a commodity, you can get it from anybody, anywhere, so unless you have, like, an online, or, or uh, LGS, where you're, like, local, and there's, you know, it's a good place to go, and hang out with people and you got less competition than an, an online store. Like, you're Gucci, but you, you, I think, I genuinely think you need to have a brand and a personality or you're just, you're just gonna vanish. Um, or, you know, or you just do it low key. You just flip it on eBay and have a CCG store and like, that's good too. But if you wanna like, get big, I feel like you, you need to have some sort of passion for it. That's just my opinion. I don't know. What do I know? What do I know? I got a whole playlist. You're, you're absolutely right. A local store here in Omaha. Um, actually, in Omaha, we have a... It's called Nebrascon. It's like a anime convention. And I'll be there. So if any of you Nebraskans are in the chat, come say what's up. I got a table. Ironically, the convention's in Council Bluffs, which is in Iowa, but it's still called Nebraskan, which is extremely confusing. It's like right on the border. Um, but yeah, say what's up. I'll, I'll be there. It's like on October 20th, I think. I should know. I really don't know. Uh, Jeremy, we do have a hell of a zoo. We have uh, one, of, one of the top three most uh, celebrated zoos in the world. Uh, China, I think, has one. Uh, San Diego Zoo, I think. They, they basically go back and forth as far as popularity. But yeah, Omaha, we have a kick-ass zoo. That's about it. That's, a, that's about all we got. One piece for the win. Do you think Pokemon will top what they've done with whatever the holiday set will be? So, I think the new shiny set coming out is going to be flipping lit. Um, it's, I mean, it's essentially Shiny Star V2. And like, I think it's gonna be extremely insane. And quite frankly, I don't know how they're gonna keep on delivering, but I, you, know, you know what my problem is? I'm very vain, and so are the people around me. And I'll tell you what I mean. I've been doing this for two and a half years, that's it. Pokemon's been around for 27, 26, 27 years. So everyone's like, well, Brian, what happens, what happens if, if people stop caring? And I think that too sometimes. I'm like, ooh, what happens if Pokemon falls off? And it's like, I'm, I'm, I've, been, I've been here for a, a freaking blink. Like, 
I barely exist. And, like, what am I worried about? Like, just because I've been here for what I feel like has been a while, I'm afraid that the trend is going to stop. It's like, bro, the trend has been happening for the better part of two and a half decades. Like, so, no, I'm not worried about it, like, going into obscurity. I, I really, I'm really not. I don't know how they're going to continue. But you know what? They've gone almost three decades now, so I, don't, I guess I don't have to worry about it. Thank God. Yeah, our new house is in the middle of nowhere. Like we have like deer and stuff. It's great. We we really we just wanted to move west. We needed to we needed to get out of like the busier part of the city. I'm like I don't know. I'm a very private person, and it was it was getting a little much. I'm extremely introverted, believe it or not. I, I have a personality online, but in real life, man, I got four friends. And that's the only people I see. Four friends in my family. I don't go out. There's no game shops past 144. There is not. Um, if you're familiar with uh, Collective's Corner in Benson, apparently he wants to move out west, like a second location. His name's Devin. And, uh, yeah, tell him, tell him to do that, because we need some game stores out of us. It's just me, and I don't have a, I don't have a real store. You're, do you, do you, uh, do you know Kelly Germany? My cousin works there uh, for a year or two. Kelly Germany, and she loves the, her job at the zoo. She's a big animal fan, obviously. Uh, it looks fun. King Collections, what's up? Man, y'all don't sleep. Or, or y'all are from, like, all around the world. I, it could be either way. But it's straight up uh, 1.15 in the morning. Which I guess isn't that late. Like, you know, all I see, but... Yeah, we got freaking 38 people in the chat. That's pretty nutty. Thanks for being here, y'all. How, you, how, uh, how you guys doing? I want a national NCAA championship every... Did you guys hear about the freaking women's volleyball thing? We had like the, the most watched women's sport in the world. They're like, we filled up a whole football stadium. Pretty nutty stuff. I don't do sports, but I, I guess we got, on the, we, we got on the trending page of Reddit for that. So like, that was dope. I was just there two days ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, tell Devin to move his ass and get out west because he keeps on talking about it and he hasn't done anything yet. Tell him to get on it. What is a friend? Fair. Fair. The parking at the current location is trash. Yes, it is. There was a Kelly who worked on the lines of closure. She's like a real petite, brown haired gal. I don't know. She, she was extremely skinny, but she, uh, she joined a gym and she got like pretty ripped up, so I don't know if you knew Skinny Kelly or Ripped Up Kelly, but either way, either way, I've got to give my cousin love, she's, she's a vet tech now, she's not at the zoo, but still, it, it, it's a good, good connection to have when you have, when you have a few doggos, so, having a vet tech and your cousin's a nice plug, let me just say uh, that, he's got a huge shit when I was climbing the boxes to talk to us, good, 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 good. Degenerate cardboard enthusiast, what's up? Faxa, for real. Luxray, 99. You're doing an awesome job. People look good. Thank you, Luxray. I appreciate that. I never thought running a business would give me so much love. I'm like, like I'm doing an all right job. Like I'm, I'm running my business fairly, which I guess is, is all you need to do on the internet nowadays to be loved. Just, just not ripping people off, but thank you for, for uh, the nice comment. I appreciate it. So the shop that is two doors down from down is closed. I'm not surprised. That plaza sucks. Like, maybe this is mean, but like, if, I, if I'm trying to go to a store that has a bad parking lot, or like it's hard to get to, like, I just skip it. Location's everything, man. I was in real estate, so, you know. As a professional realtor, I, I can say location, 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 and I'm licensed for it. I haven't done anything real estate in years. Love the content. Find it interesting and informative. Jack Fox. Thank you very much, Jack. 
I appreciate that. Apparently y'all all do, because my goodness, my, my YouTube growth is just to the flipping moon. So thanks for thanks for getting the YouTube uh, the YouTube up to 66. I got 666k subscribers. That's scary. So y'all need to either unsubscribe or more people need to subscribe because 666 isn't like a great great subscribe bubble wrap. Great subscriber count. Okay, this is like one of the last easy orders and then I actually have to like start exerting effort to finding appropriate size boxes. Uh, da, 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 degenerate cardboard. I was first introduced to you through the Vice video. Damn. But I got uh, people dogging me for like a million things in that video. I took so much hate in that video. The the fact that I get such nice comments now compared to the it, I, I was kind of a douche, I guess. Um, that was like I, I just started like Vice. They started to put me on Vice and it, it aired on HBO too, which is just mad crazy. Like four months into the business. Which is mad wild, actually, but they were doing a story on, like, entrepreneurs, and I, I think they just happened to see my TikTok, and I'm like, oh, this guy looks fine. And they told me, they're like, you need to act like a really confident business person, and I'm like, alright, but... So, a lot of it was kind of, like, fake. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people know me from Vice, even though it was two and a half years ago. I'd like to think I'm a different person now, but uh, what do I know? Jealousy is an attractive fact. The last Japanese son of the year. Oh, laws of human nature. Absolutely friggin' lutely not. Not even close. Japan pumps them out like crazy, man. So we got a uh, roaring past and future flash, I think is the name of it. Those are uh, October 27th. And then we have, I think, something else. And then we have... Um, maybe something in November, and then we have like a holiday set, it's, it's basically Shiny Star V2, and that'll come out in like, Christmas time? I don't have the exact, um, dates, but like, I bet we still have like three or four sets left, to be honest, it's, it's pretty mad. About to order six radio servers, six Japanese boxes from the site, damn, Game Zillu. thank you, I appreciate that. Somehow I'll get them shipped out within 24 hours, but I still got a, well, I guess, yeah, I mean, I was telling everybody, we had, we had 284 of these 151 bot, uh, orders to do, and we, we did a good chunk of them, I still got to label all these, so, I mean, I can't really call these done, but, like, they're at least packaged. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know how the hell I'm going to have time for any of that, but we'll figure it out. I have a wife. She she should uh, she should be prepared because it's gonna be an awful awful day. Like it's it's gonna be a miserable day. But right now it's fun. We're having fun right now. Yeah. Metal, what up? Do they have four sets between now and like next April? Yeah, so basically for every like English release, there's usually about three Japanese releases. That's usually usually how it goes. So, you know, if, if English has like five releases a year, Japan's got 15-ish. There's exceptions, but like that's that's a, about right. And then sometimes Japan, like, you know, there's like a space and time, you know, like they kind of pair them up in a clever way, but I don't know. I think what really helps my business stay successful, and y'all can jot this down in your uh, in your how to how to be a rich business notebook. I think what we did really well is we diversified between languages. I don't really know jack about other card games. Like we sell other stuff, but I'm more of a fan of like selling what you know, and I basically only know Pokemon. So we diversified between languages, so, and what's good is Pokemon knows exactly what they're doing, so, you know, 151 in Japan, that came out weeks ago, so I got all of the customers for 151 Japan, that didn't want to wait, 
And then the Korean version came out and a couple weeks later and more people bought. And now the English version's out and more people bought. So like for every release, it goes Japanese, Korean, English, Japanese, Korean, English. So you kind of triple up or at least you get customers in between sets. So you're kind of always busy. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna, gonna hope that continues, you know, we'll see, we'll see. You're pretty ripped when you make a video on how to, <laughs> how to go to a gym and run a seven figure business. My collective verse, uh, that is actually a really good idea for content and I appreciate the love. I could never do that though. I, I will never be, I will, I will never unironically make gym content on my channel. Like, that's just not me. Like, no hate to the people that do. Like, if, if you got it, want it, you know? I always, I'm always wearing this because I'm always at the gym. I got back from the gym and I got, I got started on work and it's also hotter than a mother in here. It's, uh, my garage is insulated. I paid like two grand to insulate it, but it's still hot as hell in here. It's, it, we saw like, you know, 70 to 80 degree days. So yeah, thumbs out, guns out, but no, I, I think the only people that should be making gym content are like trainers that like make a living doing it. It's just me though, like I'm just, I'm just not that kind of vlogger. You know? Look at all the 151 boxes, you collect any cards? I do very little collecting. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, a famous philosopher, once said, I don't smoke crack, I just sell it. And I had a bit of a uh, spending problem prior to this. So I'm, I'm bipolar, which is a fun fact about me, and I talk about it in a different video. And uh, the, manic, the manic side of that can get you to do some pretty stupid things, including bankrupt yourself. So I'm, I'm pretty choosy on what I buy. Um, somehow my cuckoo manic brain can differentiate between business and pleasure, which is good because this is definitely a business that could have bankrupt me. Um, I'm on drugs, I'm good. But uh, yeah, so I keep my collection pretty minimal. But hey, you know, when I'm rich and famous one day, maybe that'll change, you know, good. Get, get me till I'm 40. I feel like I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be doing really well when I'm 40. 40 seems like a good year. I got 10 years to get, to get that, to get that paper, you know? 10 years, that's a good number. It'd be cool if you had a picture with, like, Machamp. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Machamp flexing. You need an AC vent in your garage. I know, I know, I know, I know. I, uh, we just moved into this house, like, a, a few months ago, maybe three or four months ago, and uh, I do, I do need an HVAC system in here. This is absolutely bloody miserable. Um, honestly, I could probably deduct it as a business expense because the only time I'm in my garage is when I'm doing business. So I feel like that's fair. I'll talk to my accountant, but yeah, uh, uh, an HVAC system in your garage costs nearly as much as one in your house, which to me is just bonkers. Like, before we, oh my god, gravity, we're being an ass. Before we decided we were gonna move to our, our new house, I was gonna get a furnace in my garage at the old house, and they wanted $6,000, and I was like, bruh. Like, I, I make some money selling Pokemon cards, but, I don't pay myself, I just buy more cards for the inventory. So like, I don't have six grand to burn on a flipping furnace, pun absolutely intended. So uh, yeah, I said nah, and thank God I said no, because if we ended up moving like four months later, I would've been pissed. Cause I would've financed it too. Finance everything. Keep your cash, use it for something else. Fi finance it all, I finance, I finance, Freaking anything I can. You gotta save that capital. Unless you're like a normal person and don't have anything to do with cash, I guess that's that's your prerogative. I I'd rather have cash for my business than paying off loans personally than the hell do I not financial advice, don't sue me. 
I bought two 3D printers and both of them not been used in two years. Dude, 3D printer, like that whole like side hustle type thing, that looks so cool, honestly. Like, I'd be a... Uh, I'd be freaking down as hell in like a different universe to be like a 3D printer artist. Do you guys follow the homie on like Instagram that makes 3D printed uh, like Pokemon? You got like all the evolutions, like big, like big evolution statues made of 3D printer ink. Uh, I, I can't even tell you the dude's name, but I, I see this dude on Instagram all the time. I'm like, God, you're a freaking menace. What's the story behind your company's name? Oh, Ben, what's up? It's not very interesting. It's, it's Pokey, like Pokemon, and the N-E is short for Nebraska. Because, you know, I gotta rep my super exciting state. So, Pokey, Nebraska, that's... I'm sorry, that was an extremely uninteresting answer. I, sometimes I want to lie and, and say it's some other reason, but, like, then I'd be a liar head. I can't do that. Um, here we go. There's some easy ones. I knew there'd be more. Going for easy peasy over here. We're trying to look like we know what we're doing. That guy is crazy. Yeah, yeah. ADHD jump from one thing to another and blow loads of cash up. See? Yeah, mental illness. It's a, it's a bitch. To say the least. But hey, you take the right drugs and you can make it slightly better or make it completely worse. It could really go either way. Not medical advice. Don't sue me. Thanks. I don't have any money anyway. All my money's in my LLC. Good luck getting to it. Um, here we go. Brian, Brian before. My wife makes all the money in this house. No insurance, so no drugs. See, that's the benefit of being married to a teacher. They don't get paid as well as they could. But, god damn. Teacher, at least in Westside, Westside District, they get good insurance. And... I think once she's there for like two or three years, I get free insurance, so, yeah. That's how you flex when you're 30 years old. You talk about your cheap insurance. I'm not wearing Gucci or like, renting out Lambos. I'm, I'm flexing my insurance policy. Blue Cross Blue Shield, baby. I'm a pretty big deal. Corn cows. Life is an MDS coordinator. She makes money, but insurance is crazy. I would think like someone in nursing would have good insurance, right? Like, like you're kind of like in that world. I, what do I know? I, know? I know nothing, I guess. I'm barely an adult. I've been 30 for, well, I'm 30, but when you uh, dress in clothes that have Pokemon on them, and you're around cards all day. It's really hard to feel like a grown up, like I'll be honest. I don't know if you other game store owners feel the same way, like I feel like a child all the time. No complaints. Being a, being a child is great. No complaints at all. I almost said children are great, it's not a weird. Um, her loan is like 180 a check bi-weekly just for insurance. I honestly have no idea what we pay. Like, I was flexing, but I have zero idea. That sounds awful, though. Why do you give out free step-by-step -step advice on how you built a business? Is it because you wish you had it? Um, partially. Yeah, I think, uh, I listen to a lot of, like, Gary Vaynerchuk, and he's okay. He's almost more motivational than, like, actual, like, helpful advice. But uh, I listen to a lot of Alex Hermosi, and he, he gives pretty, like, actionable advice. And so I think like a lot of it comes from that. I'm like, oh, this is like dope content. Um, but uh, to be honest, like, I think it's fun. I think that's my number one reason. And it's the only thing I know anything about. Like, I've always wanted to be a YouTuber, but like, I didn't know what the hell I'd, I'd do. And so the only thing I'm really good at, like literally, like I'm unathletic as hell. I go to the gym and I have like some muscle, but like I'm not, Athleticism is coordination too, and I have none of that. I'm not, uh, I have no like skills. Like, I tried to play guitar, I sucked at it. I ran marathons, like, I guess that's athletic. But, like, really, like, I have, I have nothing interesting about me other than I'm good at business. So, I was like, alright, well, if 
I'm going to be successful on YouTube, I need to actually give like actual business advice and not just like motivational BS that half of the people on this channel do. So I was like, well, I might as well just be honest. And uh, in, in the, you know, in the, uh, what should I say? In the spirit of being honest, besides it being fun, it's quite lucrative. Um, I, I, I just got monetized like last week, which is crazy. Like it's actually bananas because I never thought I'd do it. So thank you guys for the views and the, y'all are contributing to this by the way. I think it could be quite lucr uh, uh, lucrative. So I'm, I'm very honest. So we got monetized like maybe two weeks ago ish. And we've already made $650 just from ad revenue. It's absolutely bananas. And like, I remember, like, oh, like, that's a lot of money for sure. But when we made 40, like I made like $40 on YouTube after like a week or a couple days, whatever it was. I made 40 bucks. Real talk, I'm not even kidding you. Um, am I? I'm not even kidding you. That was the most excited I have been in years, like literally, like obviously we sell more than $40 of Pokemon cards, like obviously, but at this point, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sound ungrateful, but at this point it's, it's just, it's a, it's a job. I mean, it, it, this is what I do. It's, it's like, I'm not ungrateful about it, but it's not interesting. Like, oh, we got another order. Eh. But that 40 bucks, my god, that just, that made my heart tingle. So, yeah, uh, YouTube has been fun for that. And as far as the advice, as far as the advice goes, like, quite frankly, um, I know that it's going to be entertaining for 100% of my business-oriented audience. So, 100% so of my audience is going to be entertained, I know that. And of that 100%, a very small group will actually try it. And that's no hate, like, I watched this girl, um, her channel's called XXL Scrunchie Co. And this, this girl makes scrunchie, like hair scrunchies. And she like did it like in her living room or like her bedroom. She just like started the scrunchie company. And then her like mom started helping and her dad. And now she's like this big scrunchie person. Like she's got like warehouses and like, she's like a big deal. Like this girl probably makes like a million dollars selling freaking scrunchies. And I love watching her stuff. Like, I'm so, I'm like completely entertaining it. And I'm never gonna try to start a scrunchie business. I just like her stuff. And then there's this Korean girl. She like runs a, a cafe in Korea. And like, I have no interest in running a cafe in Korea. But it's just fun to watch like business people do businessy things. And so I'm like, oh, people like my content, and, and they do, and it's great. But yeah, I think like the chances of, so, like a lot of people, oh my God, a lot of people are like, well, Brian, aren't you creating competition for yourself? And, and again, I'm saying, well, there's not really any risk of competition because 100% of people will be entertained. 1% of people might think about trying it. Of that 1%, only 1% will actually do it successfully. And of that 1%, chances are they're doing like a local game store, or they're on eBay, or they're on TCG Player, and they won't even compete with me anyway. So there's really not a lot of risk to sharing everything. Um, I mean, if you think of it, there, Pokemon's too big. Like, there's no risk. The only thing I don't share are my suppliers, because my suppliers do have a limited amount of resources. Like, they have to allocate us, too. Like, Southern Hobby English distributor, like, I'll share that with you all day, but my Japanese people, they don't have infinite, re infinite inventory, like, they run out of stuff. So I can't share my suppliers because, like, quite frankly, I want, I want my stuff, I gotta make that paper, you know what I'm saying? But everything else, I'm like, here's all my secrets, like, go, go, go ham, go wild with it, try to get rich, like, I don't care. I get, I get lovely comments, I get subscribers, I get very nice emails from people all the time, thank you for the nice emails. It's all positive, 
Plus, I get paid for it. Like, damn. And then customers. Customers come and they either buy my stuff because they like my content and they want support, or they're like, oh, this guy seems trustworthy. I'll buy his stuff. Or they want to start their own Pokemon business and they want me to, you know, supply them with their first load of stuff. It's, it's a win-win-win, really. Like, there's absolutely no downside to just giving away every piece of knowledge you have. I don't know why more people don't do it. New coupon code, lucrative. God damn, that's actually a good one. I might unironically make that a coupon code. That's, that's so something I would do, too, honestly. Like, that's such a me thing. Should I literally do it right now? I think that'd be hilarious. Lucrative. I'm legit doing it. We're gonna we're gonna take uh, what do you, what do you think? Like five dollars off an order for for a lucrative. I don't know if anyone's actually gonna use it, but like I'm I'm straight doing it. How long would that take? Coupons. Wix is amazing, by the way. If you're building a website, everybody talks about Shopify, but like to be honest, like I just love Wix. Here we'll do five dollars off a uh, order of five dollars or more. How about that? I don't know that I know how to spell lucrative though. Like I said, I'm really, really good at business and everything else I suck at. Okay, lucrative, there we go. I spell it right, all right, I'll give myself some love. God, I'm such a troll. All right, lucrative, $5 off any order of $5 or more. It's, it's, it's live on the site. I, I, it won't expire either. Y'all can use that whenever. My sense of humor is just wackadoodle. Coupon code lucrative. I want to see how many people I actually get. That's just too funny. Our EX box is worth investing in. Um, I. I'm gonna sound like I'm gonna sound like a nutter butter when I say this, but like. I think ECBs, man. I, I don't, everyone hates on them now, but like a year ago, those were like the freaking goat item. And I'm over here just like, yo, what happened? So I'm keeping all my, like, I, that might be a nutty thing to say, but I have a lot of cases of ECBs that I'm just like, that I'm just hanging on to from the distro. And like, I hope I'm not wrong, but like, they're so cheap. Like, I, I guess that's why. I'm not like, I'm not saying like I'm going to make a gajillion dollars on them. But ETVs are so underpriced right now. But I'm like, like, I don't know about EX boxes, to be honest. Thank you, the bus, I have no idea. But man, I, I'm, I'm bullish on the ETVs, I gotta say. You heard it here first. I will say, the only negative with the ETVs are they're damn huge. Like, a case of ETBs is 17 pounds. It's like that big. So like that's a huge downside. So keep that in mind. Booster boxes are nice and small. I think Beastar Universe is the way to go personally. Like I sell it, so I'm obviously biased, but I'm keeping a big supply of them. I'm gonna give you guys a secret because this is absolutely bonkers. PayPal, uh, Mason, if you're still here as a business owner, you, you might want to know this. PayPal has a thing called PayPal Working Capital. And if you're a business and you do a certain amount of money on PayPal, they give you like a loan, but it's not a loan that goes into your credit. Like they don't check your credit. It's a loan. Um, it's an internal PayPal loan. So they look at how much money you bring into PayPal and they loan you money based on that amount. And there's no credit check. They don't care about your credit history. You could have zero credit. All they do is look at how much money you bring in and you give them one lump sum like if you want, you know, $60,000, you pay $5,000 up front and then you get the 60,000 in cash and you just pay it back uh, with a percent of your money you bring in. So if you sell something on PayPal that's hundred bucks, 20% of that goes towards your debt. And depending on, um, depending on how much money you put up front, you can add or subtract from that percentage. So like if I have a, uh, you know, hundred thousand dollars that I want from PayPal, I have to pay a lump sum of seven thousand dollars, and then they take twenty percent of each purchase away from me. Or I could be like, hey, here's a lump sum of only six thousand dollars. 
but you take 30% away from me every transaction. So there's math involved. You have to be smart, which I need to work on that part of the of the deal. It's just something interesting. So PayPal working capital, look into it. Any, uh, I was I was like, why am I talking about this? So PayPal working capital, um, what I want to do, and this is this is probably a little nutty. What I want to do is take a hundred grand out, to just all of it, and I just want to put all of it on VStar Universe. Oh my God! Someone used the coupon code. Lucrative. Somebody used it. That's too funny who used it. I want to put all a hundred grand on VStar Universe, which is completely irresponsible. But I, I swear to God, by Christmas it's gonna be up to like hundred ten bucks a box. Oh, Terry. <laughs> Terry bought a, a V-Star Universe box. That's actually hilarious. Look at me influencing the market. Don't, don't call me an influencer, but it just happened. God damn, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm such a nut two in the morning. Uh, thank you, Terry, for the purchase and using, using coupon code lucrative to save $5. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. God, we've got a lot of sales in the past 24 hours. 14 grand, Jesus Christ. That's gonna be a, you know what to package up. Um, anyway, I need to figure out what this order is because my sticky note fell off and I'm not sure if it's accurate. So stand by. You don't want to get your sticky notes all, uh, all mixed up, guys. That's, that's an expensive problem. So allegedly, this person bought two UPCs. That's that's what that's what these are. James, James, what did you buy? Two UPCs. That's what's up. Thank you, James. Degenerate cardboard enthusiast. <laughs> that's too funny. Yeah, it it really depends on how much money you bring in metal. Um, so like. I bring in enough money where they are okay with giving me that much. Obviously you sign a lot of contracts and whatnot, um, but you gotta remember, I'm selling like two million of stuff a year, and that doesn't you know, all go into PayPal, obviously, but a good percentage of my sales are PayPal sales. And you know, so for them, 100 grand's like, eh, they'll be fine. I guess. I, I mean, to me, I agree. To me, it's, it seems risky on their end. But I I think PayPal could basically just end my, like, because my bank account's tied to PayPal. So, like, if I was trying some shenanigans, they could probably just drain my bank account and run away with all. I, I have no idea. I agree with you. To me, to me, it's absolutely bananas that they give us $100,000 to some stupid 30-year-old that works out of his garage. But, like, hey, Oh, whatever. Joshua, it's came really <laughs> Oh my god, that's too funny. I literally got back from the gym and I just got to work. Also, it's hot as hell in here, so here we are. Thank you for the love. Thoughts on Korean sets. Okay, Korean sets, let me tell you about Korean sets. Korean sets, to me, are a very good thing to look into if, and only if, the Japanese equivalent is stupidly expensive. So I'll tell you what I mean. Korean Raging Surf, in my opinion, is a bad investment because the Japanese one is cheap as hell. And people are always gonna prefer Japanese. Now, Korean EV Heroes and Korean 151, to me, those are a good buy because you know, uh, EV Heroes is like $400 or whatever the hell it is in Japan. Uh, the evolving, evolving Skies is basically EV Heroes. And that's like three or 400 bucks, I don't know. So if you can get Korean EV Heroes for like 50 bucks, like to me, that's a no brainer, personally. Uh, 151, same way. A, a Japanese box of 151 is like 150, 60 bucks. But the Korean version is like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. So. That's my opinion. Like to me, Korean is only good if the Japanese equivalent is uh, overpriced. Uh, I don't know. You have to buy ten boxes of Beast to buy for ninety bucks the code and makes that same price. I like it. That's what's up. PayPal is a devil. Yeah, I don't, I don't like PayPal either, but I'll take their money. You know. 
Yeah, see, Curry and Clay and Snow. Um, Clay Burst was super expensive, so I don't think he made like a stupid call there. But Snow is super cheap. Clay is pretty cheap. I don't see that ever going well for you. Um, but EV Heroes and 151, I, I truly think those are going to be like good products for a long time. Nemo, 777, I like it. You're an inspiration. It makes me want to try to do this. Try it? Screw it. Go for it. Why the hell not? YOLO. Um, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do now. This one looks easy. I, I've been doing this for a, a few hours, or well, for like an hour now. So I'm trying to pick all the easy ones so I can just like package and talk. But I'm running out of easy ones. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of risk in trying to start a business. I mean, I guess there's upfront capital, but like, worst case scenario, you break even or you lose like 5% of your money, I don't know. I'm no newer to seal when it comes to Pokemon, but does almost all seal product rise in the other season? Um, I mean, yeah, like booster boxes do for sure, but like it really depends on, on how, like when you buy them. like. They rise in price if you get them at a cheap price, but like, if you're buying a, you know, if you're buying Obsidian Flames for $120, like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that would be a good move, but if you buy, if you can get Obsidian Flames for like, $100, like, it seems reasonable that it might go up a little bit. I don't, I don't think it would go up enough to where you could like flip it and make a lot of money. It, especially because eBay will take, you know, 13%. So it kind of depends on like your context. But like long term, I, I don't think there's been a single booster box that's gone down in value from MSRP. Um, I, you know, like over a, a few years, I'm sitting in flames and uh, how that ball, like obviously those are like those are kind of crap right now. But in the long term, there's never been a booster box that's that's gone down. So it just depends on how long you want to hold it for, you know. I have a whole uh, I have a whole investing video on on YouTube, and it's not one of those hype investing videos like buy this now, <laughs> free attendees. It's it's more of like a, I'm very like, I'm very transparent and blunt. Um, I guess most of you guys probably know that, but anyone do, like, I could be kind of a, kind of a dick, honestly, because I want to save you guys money, and I don't need your money, and I have plenty of customers. So, my investment video is basically like, hey, take care of your other stuff first, because with Pokemon investing, here's what most people do. They hear about... They hear Brian talking about V-Star Universe and how it's going to the moon. And so then they spend all their capital on V-Star Universe. And they shouldn't spend it because they don't have like any savings. They don't have any savings, you know, in their in their account. So they, they spend it all on V-Star Universe. And then and then a year later, their kidneys braces, and they don't have any money. And so and so even though V-Star Universe a year later is still roughly the same price, they have to sell it. And then they had hundreds of dollars tied up in something and they lost money because when they sold it, they had to spend 13% of their gains on fees. And so not only did they have thousands of dollars tied up for a year or two, they also lost money. And they could have had that cash in a you know, 5.2% APR bank account where they actually were making money on it. So like... My, my investing video is very blunt, and it's like, hey, if you don't have thousands of dollars laying around that you don't need at all, which is not a lot of Americans at least, like, really think about your own finances, then, like, don't buy Pokemon cards, because, you know, we're not in the, in the COVID boom anymore, where you can just make free attendees. We're very much in a market where it's probably a good time to get in because everything's undervalued in my opinion. But only if, only if you have no credit card debt, you have no, like kids, like I don't have kids, but I assume kids are expensive as hell. And so, 
Hey, you know, if you have a kid that requires some kind of, you know, special accommodations, like, kids are already expensive, but I've got some friends from uh, grade school, and their kid has a lot of accommodations that they have to pay for, which is fine, but they weren't really expecting that, and so I bet they're happy that they didn't spend all their money on Pokemon cards, and they had enough cash to, to properly, you know, handicap their house and whatnot, because that's expensive. And so, even if you have a lot of cash, think about, hey, am I having kids anytime soon? Do I, have, do I have enough money if something goes, you know, differently than I planned for the kids? And a lot of people just don't do that, and then they lose their ass. So, I don't know, just keep that in mind, I guess. Yeah, fat bird tips. Fat bug tips, rebel clash, yeah, everyone hated on it. It's, it's up. Um, what else we got? Da, 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 da. Hey bro, do you recommend getting Japanese cards for a newer seller? Any tips? Um, v Star Universe is a no-brainer. V Max Climax, if you can get a really cheap deal, that's a good that's a good one. Um, I think Raging Surf and Black Flame, like I sell these, so I'm biased, but I don't really care if you buy from me. Those are so damn cheap right now that if you have capital, I, I guess. Okay, pretty much everyone that you're streaming to probably has two fifty or three dollars to spend. Well, if you buy a box of Raging Surf for seventy bucks, you could charge two fifty a pack and make like twenty percent. So the really cheap stuff to me, it's it's a good call. Um, when I was doing ripping chips, to me you could charge three bucks for a pack, and no one blinked an eye no matter how much the box costs. And there's thirty packs in a box, so to me that stunks, but. It really depends on your uh, on your, your customer base, your audience, for sure, for sure. What kind of sh are you on, JK? <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on caffeine, baby, that's about it. I recently invited the Crown Team with boxes since they don't have boosters and it's been a great move. Oh, okay. I'll remember that. I have a lot of Crown Team flying around. I'll, I'll think about doing that. Son is killing me in Digimon. <laughs> I'm one of the last surviving guys in my circle that don't have kids, mainly because I'm still one. Your name is literally Degenerative Enthusiast. Like, I, you're very self-aware and I respect that. That's such a good name for someone that just calls himself a child. Alright, what the hell are we gonna package next? This looks good. Ugh. Oh my god. Order 29872. Alright, let's do it. No kids. Do you guys ever hear the word, uh, dink? D-I-N-K, it's like an acronym. It means uh, dual income, no kids. My friends are dinks. I never heard that word until they, they told me about it. And I, I thought that was the funniest like little acronym. They live the dink life. And they're really proud of it. Like they have it like, they have one of those like little uh, word things where you put the little letters in. They're, you know, very cute like Etsy looking word things. And it just, it just says dink life and dual income, no kids. So they both make money. Apparently they're never gonna have kids, so they're just gonna be like rich as hell without any like risk. I love it, I don't know. We're, we're trying to have a kid, so like I, I'll never, I won't live the dink life for long, but right now we're living the dink life. And let me tell you, it's freaking great. I'm gonna dink it up for as long as I can. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, you'd have to go to individual Japanese sellers, uh, Park X. There's no, uh, no Japanese distributors work directly with Americans. It's, it's just not what they do. So you gotta find, you gotta find somebody. Instagram, that's all we did. Mr. Tattoo ASMR, just wanted to thank you for the free Raging Surf pack in my four boxes. Hey, Ultra, ooh, okay, you are in there? Let's freaking go. I like the name, Mr. Tattoo ASMR. Fun fact, I tried ASMR out for a little bit. That's a profitable industry if you do it right. Let me tell you, you get monetized on ASMR. Oof. I don't know. I don't know where if you actually do that, Mr. Tattoo, but I don't know. It, 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 this was this was years and years and years ago. But Pokemon for fails. I'm straight up cutting soap again because like there's profit in cutting soap. Fire. Financially independent. Oh yeah, 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 I've heard that. Financially independent, retire early. 
That's the goal, for real. Except, like, I'd be depressed as hell if I retired. My goal is to be able to retire. That's my goal. Like, I would not be happy, like, sitting on my ass playing, like, watching sports or playing golf. It would kill me. It, it would, it would just, it would destroy me. I need to do stuff. But yeah, the five, I mean, I, res I respect the hustle for those who want to retire early, like, respect. That's what's up. Turn the license plate, I-S-A-M-M-O-C, I spent, oh, I spent all my, <laughs> oh, god damn, I wish I, I got to that license plate first. I get to pokey any on a license plate, I should, I should probably do that, that would be a good, uh, tax write-off. Tax write-off, baby. My goal is to retire around, retire those around me, respect, respect. Yeah, I just wanna, I probably wanna do this till I'm like 40, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe then I'll be bored, or maybe I'll still love it, but 40, I, I keep, 40 seems like a good age, like, so yeah, I'm, I'm at least gonna commit to Pokemon till I'm 40, y'all got 10 years, and then, uh, and then it's up in the air, like, my contract needs to be renewed after that, longer than a K-pop contract ends, I'll say that. Most that are very successful at early age retire. Um, yeah, no, 100%. I know a lot of people that have. When I was in real estate, I worked for uh, Berkshire Hathaway. I was like the, whatever, the brokerage. So, as you can imagine, Berkshire Hathaway is your brokerage. You're going to be around a lot of Richie Richies. And a couple of them did that. They retired early and said, ah, oh, F it, I'm bored, and then I went back to work. Which good. People were made to work. As soon as you truly retire, that's when your brain shuts off and you go senile. I, I've seen it firsthand several times in my family. Uh, bu, 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 bu. Let's see about this one. This one looks like it'd be easy. Yep, you get you get an old uh, old relative. They retire, and then a couple of years after watching. Fox News all day, that everything just goes downhill. It's quite sad. Hey, this will be a good one. You gotta open a box, just fits the items perfectly. You ever thought about doing those mystery box? I will never do mystery box with a box. A lot of people ask me. Um, I think that would honestly make people really happy if I did. But no, nah, I'll never do mystery boxes with that. There's no, there's no upside to it. Like either all of them are really good that I unload and people just don't agree. And if I'm too generous, I lose money. And even if I do it completely fairly, someone's gotta lose. And that someone is just gonna go off. I didn't get the, you know, I didn't get the best thing possible. He probably never even put the best thing in. I bet this whole thing was a scam. And you know, I, it's, you know, you got Danny Phantom and Pokey Brad, and they all, they've been doing it, I guess. And they're all honest people, and I genuinely believe that they're, uh, that they're whatever are legit. Like I don't doubt it for a second. But. Uh, you know, if, if Danny Phantom sends someone to somebody that's slightly lesser than they want, then, oh, Danny's a scammer. You know, I, I just don't want to deal with that. Just not trying to deal with that. Oh, boy. Am I out of easy stuff? Yeah, it's looking like it. Um, um Looking like it. Well, let me get some bigger boxes, I guess. Need some bigger boxes. Oh, hold up, what's this? Here's a nice box. Use this. You can only have so many box sizes. This is amazing. Yeah, it, it's 100% uh, bug tips. There's gonna be winners and losers, and in the end, I feel like I'd be the loser. I got ripped. 
I'll stuff up your quality, my goodness. I pulled three golds from the Pokero packs. Damn, let's freaking go. Good for that. Pokero seems like a good guy. I imagine. Um, I feel like this one be. This one should fit in here nice and easily. Hey, there we go. That's a good fit. I hate English stuff. It's all big and bulky and look at all uh, it's all differently sized. It's horrible. English sucks. Alright, you heard it here first, guys. Japanese stuff is so easy to pack. Thoughts on ETBs? Yeah, I was talking earlier about ETBs. I, I love them. I think they're a good long time hold. I mean, uh, my only, I, I was saying earlier, at one time people like valued and collected them so hard. And then like people just kind of stopped, which I think is goofy. And I, I think people will start up again. I really do. Um, so I'm holding on to a bunch of mine, like ETBs, but and it depends on the person, because it's like, I, I was saying before, like, they take up so much space, they're extremely large. So, like, I've got a big-ass basement, but it's already filling up, and I'm kind of like, huh, do I really want to keep all these? Because my shelf space is getting a little bit, uh, a little bit sketchy, you know, a little bit sketchy, so... I'm about to end up liquidating all my ETBs, not, not because I don't, I don't trust the stock, but, uh, good I don't have freaking space for it. I've been watching Rudy with Alpha Investments. He's, he's going, I guess he goes pretty heavy back on the Legos. And he's like, yeah, Legos are, they're a great um, product. They're a great product, but, like, they're freaking huge. So, if you have the space, you know, uh, ETBs or Legos or whatever, could be a good, could be a good stock, you know? But... Uh, it just depends on your situation. All this investment crap does. That's why I don't really do investments in Pokemon. Like, I hold on to stuff for sure, for sure. But it, it's a lot more profitable, in my opinion, to just buy it, sell it, buy more, sell more. But, oh man. But, that's what separates a job from investing, you know. Like, if I, uh... If I had millions of dollars laying around, I would just buy a V-Star Universe and do something else. But I make a lot more money for me flipping this stuff. But I have to maintain customer base and customer service and uh, website stuff. And, uh, is that here? You know, website stuff. I have to do all this work that, you know, an investor wouldn't have to do. They just sit on their ass and their, their money grows. So, that, I mean, that's the difference. Um, no, this one looks like it'd be crappy, too. I have a bunch of other boxes in my basement. So, like, up here, I'm just trying to do the easy ones. Line the walls like Ozarks. Do you own any hide cards? Uh, I have like the whole Pikachu, like dressed up as like the cosplay Pikachus. I like those. I think they're super, they're super cute. They're like PSA eights. So they're not valuable, but I think they're adorable. Especially the Eevee one. Oh, uh, wands, that Pikachu grand. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, the Poncho Pikachus. I like them. I think they're adorable. I accidentally pressed enter. I got you. Did you get a Van Gogh Pikachu? I did not. I did not get a Van Gogh Pikachu. I feel like someone at like my level, I get criticized for taking one away from the community, which I respect.
stuff that's happened like with the you know the nfts and, and this and that like oh there's so much sketchy stuff that's happened in the past two years like i don't know why or how anyone trusts anybody anymore you've got uh people that grade cards that you know you send them your cards and they grade on your behalf i don't understand that personally because it's not that hard to grade a card but you know maybe you save a couple bucks I mean, like me as a consumer, I wouldn't trust anybody with my property. I know it sounds like negative. I just don't get it. I, like most of these people don't even have like an online, like a business and trust me, businesses can rip you off too. Like for sure it's happened. But like, you know, you get these, these random people and I'm just like, yo, I don't know. It just, it doesn't seem worth it to me. Um, you know, okay, they're the five biggest eBay sellers of all things in general. Yeah, I mean, like, I, like I, that's better than most people I've heard. Like, most people, it's like, oh, you know, on Instagram, a lot of people said they're fire. But, I mean, yeah, you know, you've got these, I mean, you've got people, SBF, you've got people in Times Magazine and Forbes, and they rip people off. And I don't want to make it sound like don't trust anybody, but I mean, like, I don't know, I wouldn't personally. It, personally, I wouldn't buy from me. I've got great reviews. I've got great hair. I've got social media. Um, but I just, I'd rather buy from bestbuy.com personally. I know it sounds wacky, but like, I'm, I'm so distrusting on the internet and whatnot. Like, I would buy from me. If I was a customer, I would buy from my store if I used PayPal goods and services. And like, that's it. So, you know, the, the whole concept of giving expensive cards to people or expensive boxes to people, I mean, like, no hate, power to you, but like, I, I, I personally, I wouldn't do it. I don't know. You'll never hear me rep any company. Um, I'm sure he's a great guy, but I, I can't get behind it. All right. Hey, thank you guys so much. I do appreciate you. Um, we've been streaming for over an hour and a half, an hour and a half, Jesus, sheesh, go to bed, it's 2.13 in the morning, um, yeah, thank you so much, if you have any other questions, I'll, I'll be live again probably tomorrow, uh, probably with the wife too, we're gonna be finishing up hopefully, I don't know, maybe, but, uh, after this hell on earth is over, I'll get back to making videos again, um, there is a business playlist on my channel, it's all free, I give away pre like every single piece of information I have that's helped me build my business, except for my suppliers' names for the reasons I gave earlier. But I literally put it all out there. I don't hide anything. I don't gatekeep anything. There will never be anything hidden behind a paywall. I make money from ad revenue and sales on my website, baby, and that's all I need. So, and this is fun for me. This is exciting. So, I'll never sell anything. There'll never be a course. I don't even need your email. They'll never be like, oh. You know, sign up for my mastermind. Ain't ever gonna be that. Just YouTube only, nothing else. So if you want to see that, go to my YouTube channel, watch some business content, and you know, I'll have that updated uh like this week. Uh, 
next week I'll probably have a new video out. Um, I gotta start pumping them out again. I, I got like two weeks between now and the next big Japanese sets come out on October 27th. So I'm gonna try to get like three videos out between um, the end of this week and the 27th. So we'll see, you know. But uh, thank you guys for all the support, for real. Uh, buy myself at pokeyanny.com. And uh, have a wonderful day. Good night. Peace out. How do I end this? Oh, I gotta go to my phone. I'm gonna awkwardly walk up to my phone after. It's like uh, when you know, you're going to the same area of the parking lot and you both say goodbye and then you end up going and following each other the whole time. That's how this feels. Um,